Hi guys, welcome to Northern Oz Explorer. I'm Drew. So today I'm just gonna run through quickly the overview of the 12 volt setup, which I'll be putting in the back of the Hilux. I've gathered together pretty much everything I need for the build. I'm using at the center of the build will be the Red Arc DC to DC charger. I'm using a Red Arc for a couple of reasons. They're renowned for being good quality. They are built in my home state, where I'm originally from in South Australia. They're Australian built, made, good warranties, very reliable, so hence why I've chosen them. They'll be at the heart of the 12 volt setup. Basically, I'll run cables from the battery in the front of the vehicle through to the rear. I've got a piece of marine ply, which I'm going to use as a board to connect everything to. I'm then gonna bolt that to the drawers in the back of the Hilux, so I don't have to unnecessarily drill holes into the drawer setup in the rear of the Hilux. From that, uh, it'll connect to the auxiliary battery. The auxiliary battery, I'm gonna run a number of fuses. You can get these fuses online, which are they're multi-fuse bus bars. So you connect them all together and they're all separate from each other because I'm gonna be running different circuits. And then I can put in the appropriate MIDI amp fuses, uh, basically right off of where the, uh, the main circuits will run off of that and right off of the main battery, or sorry, the auxiliary battery. From there on each of the circuits, I'm gonna run a number of different circuits. For the minor electrical equipment, so that'll include things like lights in the back up, uh, in the back of the canopy, and a few other bits and pieces as well. I'm gonna run it through a bus block, which is a Blue Sea Systems bus block. I had a bit of a look online. These seem to get fairly good reviews. And then I'll run those also through a switching panel. I probably won't wire it up for lighting. I'll probably just use the switches. I might, I haven't really decided yet. And then that will control the different setups in the back. I'm going to have a number of different plugs. I've got the Anderson plug mounts. You can't buy these. These are Powertech ones that I bought 50 amp. You can't buy these in red, but what I'll, I've got is I've got a red one and they're interchangeable with the gray ones that are in there. So what I'm going to do is swap that out. And then for the red, red denotes a solar input. So that will connect directly to the DC to DC charger so I can connect so I don't have to have a, because the DC to DC charger is a solar regulator. So then I can connect directly into the system through that. And that way it's very clear and I'm not gonna mistake putting the wrong connection uh, into the DC to DC charger, which could cause some issues. I've got a number of plugs. I've got Anderson, uh, sorry, I've got uh, outlet plugs for USB, cigarettes, and for Engel fridge. So I've got an angle fridge in the back. The dual battery will sit in a tray, which uh, I've just bought from um, Super Cheap, I think. Basically what that will do is bolt to the plywood setup, which I'm gonna have in the back. I'm gonna put a couple of brackets in, set that in, so that will be nice and sturdy and not go anywhere. I've got a 350 watt pure sine wave inverter that is gonna be fitted to the back to provide electrical power. I don't need a lot, I'm not running heavy machinery. It'll just be probably for 240 volt chargers, uh, which step down for 12 volt anyway. I've got cabling for conduit, for the cable that I'm gonna run, a pair of wire strippers, which uh, makes life a lot easier rather than doing it all by hand. I have to monitor the system, everything's gonna be connected up through a battery monitor, which has got a shunt on it as well. So all of the negatives run, have to run through the shunt back to the auxiliary battery, and then it'll tell you on for your draw uh, on your battery. And once it's calibrated through, it'll be able to tell you how much you've got left on your battery, where you currently sit, power going in and power going out. So uh, that's gonna be a good piece of kit. What I'm gonna do is run all of my negatives through a negative bus bar. Uh, before they're grounded, just to make it easier and localised. Uh, and finally, the last piece that I've got here is, or probably a couple last pieces, the Azito heat gun. I've got some shrink wrap to, for electrical connections. I've got a couple of different connectors. Uh, these are for crimping, uh, battery terminals for crimping. These are heat shrink wraps, which uh, use the heat gun for. And then I bought online a 
crimping tool. I went around and had a look at the shops. I think in the shops, uh, one of these was, I think it was about 60, $60 or $65 uh, that, I, that was in the shops here locally. I went online and bought not a similar one, but the identical, the exact same one for $45. So I don't mind paying a little bit more when you shop locally, but you know, for that sort of price, you're far better off going online, free shipping. Um, I would say that good piece of advice is when you are doing your collecting all your kit and your bits and pieces that you want to do any installs for, it really pays to shop around. The Red Arc stuff I bought, rather than buy from Red Arc directly, I bought it from a company online. They provided all it in a kit, so you can get all your wiring and all your different connectors and different fuses and bits and pieces, battery terminals. They provided it in a kit, and it's actually cheaper to buy it in a kit with all of the equipment that you need uh, than to buy it directly from the web, uh, the uh, Red Arc website. So I would highly recommend when you are going online, you shop around, make sure you find the best price so you are, you're not paying excessive amounts. What I'll do is I'll put a wiring diagram up on uh, this part of the video just so you can have a bit of a, a quick overview of what my setup's going to look like. And then the next stage will be starting the install. So I'll start off with the marine ply, start connecting all of that, and I'll run you through the process. This will probably be a multi-step, uh, multi-series video. And uh, if you've got any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.